Hey guys, before we get started this week, we wanted to tell you that we have a new ongoing intermittent Patreon bonus series Mm -hmm. where we're going to invite somebody over and bet on chocobo races with them. Yeah, and we're releasing our first episode today for Patreon supporters uh, as a thank you for being Patreon supporters. So if you're interested in listening to that episode, it's just a dollar. Go to patreon.com slash nocat and yeah. Hear us bet on chocobos with a friend. That's right. A special guest. And with that, let's get going on the show. No use talking about how deep it is. The only thing to do is dig deeper. (laughs) Tell her to the other side. No matter what analogy you want to use, climbing a mountain, sailing across an ocean, digging a hole. I'm just worried that (coughs) we're getting to the other side of the planet in the hole. We're going to wind up melting in the core. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, season four, episode 25. Yeah, welcome to disc two. Yep. The tyranny of disc one has ended, and the the blissful, fast narrative of disc two has begun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last week, we climbed the ice challenge, and we, ch- we challenged the cliff. We challenged the cliff. We made it up to the center of the crater Mm -hmm. at the northern cave or the northern crater, whatever. Mm -hmm. Sephiroth was in a materia egg surrounded by branches. Yeah, we gave the black materia to Sephiroth and then uh, all of the weapons woke up and flew out to go all over the world and stomp on cities, I guess. Yep. Some of them to just patrol the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. They just, and some of them, you know, to fly randomly around the skies. They're all around the world now. Um, I mean, what day of the trip was this? That were, is this a start I think of day a day? Four yeah, because we, five... we stayed up all night to finish disc one and right. then went to bed. And now we're three episodes into disc two. Is this the day where I was sick all day? No, that's still ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's coming still. That's not, I don't think that's yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. This trip felt so short, right? And now. Now it feels like the longest thing in the world. But right now, yeah, I think it's day four or five, depending on how you calculate it. Yeah. Because <laughs> there was that first night that was a couple hours. I'm really curious to see how we're going to play the next one of these. Because this was, I mean, like every time we do it, we do it a little differently. And every time when we're done, we're like, let's not do it like that again. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Oh, before we get started this week, let's check in with our good friend Daniel K over at the Daniel K's Let's Plays podcast. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me just tune the radio to the Daniel K frequency, as I always do. Mm -hmm. And, oh, here he comes. All righty. Hi, listeners. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Ryan. It's time for another live weather report. Oh, boy. It has been a real weird day. Uh, You've probably all noticed, uh, but here's a recap. So... The day started really miserable, uh, overcast, we had showers and drizzle, a uh, total of 10 millimeters of rainfall in just the first half of the morning. We had northerly winds of 30 to 40 k's an hour, um, and then all of a sudden things just cleared up. And it's been fine and sunny ever since. It's been still and it's been calm. There's no precipitation. We've had scattered high clouds, but they're all giving way to a beautiful, blue, clear summer day. Yeah. I mean, these are the kinds of, like, little little miracles that we meteorologists live for, you know? You can... You can keep charts and you can make predictions, but once in a while something will come along and it'll just come out of the blue and take everyone by surprise. And it's just great, you know? So, for the rest of the day, why not head out to the beach or a park and just have some fun in the sunshine? Yeah, so that's, um... Oh, hang on. We've got a late breaking weather update, listeners. It's coming from... NASA. What? Uh Uh Okay. We've got a... It looks like we've got a near-Earth object alert. They've spotted an asteroid. Uh, It looks like it's about... 10 kilometers in diameter. So that's pretty big. Um, it, it is on a trajectory. 
that will bring it into contact with the Earth. Uh, it's projected to impact the atmosphere somewhere in the southeastern quarter of the Indian Ocean. Uh-huh. Uh huh. All right. It was spotted. It was spotted about five minutes ago, some four and a half thousand kilometers up away in space, and it was traveling a little over twenty-three kilometers a second. Um, so that means it's going to make landfall in. Ah. Uh, um, 20 seconds ago. Okay, so, uh, disregard the earlier forecast of fine weather for the rest of the evening. That's now been updated. It's been updated to a hypersonic shock wave of superheated air and vaporized rock, pushed by a colossal front of pressure, expanding outward from the point of impact in the Indian Ocean at speeds in excess of 7,000 kilometers an hour. As I speak, the Earth's upper mantle is literally being wiped clean. There's still some two or three hours before that shock wave reaches the southwestern coast of North America, and I pray that its violence and ferocity is somewhat diminished in that time. But from my weather station here in coastal Western Australia, I'm afraid I don't have much time left. So... Um... I've been really loving the show, guys. Uh, I'm sorry I won't get to hear you beat that shithead Sephiroth. Okay. Uh, Bye-bye, everyone. Um, Oh, uh, whatever you do, Jeff and Ryan, don't bother fighting those emerald and ruby weapons. It's just not worth it, all right? Okay. Okay, uh, I hope Daniel K is okay. Well, I mean, I don't know, uh, if you've noticed this, but his weather reports never seem to have anything to do. I mean, I, granted, he's in Australia, but, like, and, you know, yeah, I'm, I was checking online during that. There, I didn't see any asteroid reports. Oh, well, well, we've been tuning into Parallel Universe Daniel K. Did I not mention that? N- no. Did I not tell you, you about this? You said we were going to get weather reports. No, when, like, we were cool. in, when we were in the live stream, like, before we started the mm-hmm. season, I got in touch with Parallel Universe Dan, uh, Daniel K. He's from, uh, one of the, like, the only other Parallel Universe in the multiverse where Final Fantasy VII exists. I mean, that's really cool, <laughs> but I feel like you should fucking tell me what's going on on the show. You're right. I should could have communicated that a lot better. First of all, so that I don't look like a fool. Well, and second of all, so I don't like have a heart attack thinking the planet is blowing up. You're right. I could have handled it And the it listeners, better. too. Y- yes. I. This is on me. And I mean, people might have actually been interested if they knew that it was from a parallel universe and not just somewhere in Australia. Well, I was still interested. Either way, that's pretty sweet. So... I hope everything's okay over there. Well, it sounds like it's not. It does sound like it's not. But we'll check in with him again Mm -hmm. and see how that's going, you know, see how things go. Mm -hmm. I guess. I mean, who, I mean, I'm just, who cares really, I guess. I mean, I kind of care about the guy. He may not be in our universe. Well, yeah, I'm just saying our planet's fine. You're right. Yeah. Well, since our planet is Sort of fine. Since our planet is sort of fine, let's get going on the episode. Yeah, so I mean, we're going to start on a flashback, and it's going to cut quickly to Tifa, and we'll be in Junon, which for those who don't remember, because it was forever ago, (laughs) was like really the second big city we went to. Yeah, it's it's the city that's like built into this giant cliffside on a beach, and the entire city is a giant howitzer. Yeah, it's It's like like a huge gun. Yeah, the huge cannon that's pointed at Costa del Sol. Right. But first, we're going to have a flashback. We're going to go to the train station. Mm -hmm, The Sector 7 train station, I believe. Mm -hmm. So let's get to it. This place. Flashback, I guess. And yeah, Cloud is like passed out on the steps of the train station. And Mm -hmm. the train man is kind of nudging him like, this guy's (laughs) fucked up. And and Tifa like (laughs) recognizes him. Oh, this must be how she found him. Like how they got, he got with Avalanche. Right, okay. What's the matter? Oh... Poor kid. 
Ugh. Was that zap like the sound of like electricity bringing him to life? Cloud is sitting on the side of the train tracks, kind of like unsure of who he is, I guess. He, I mean, he looks like catatonic and like sick, like like a this guy are sick kind of <laughs> vibe. There's like a stray dog that's like licking his face like this, you and know. Tifa walks up. Are you all right? Ooh. Uh, uh, Tifa? Tifa? Tifa! <laughs> oh, so he was like a fucked up clone that was gonna die in the street, and then Genova like lightninged memories into him from Tifa or something, and she's like, what? Oh, Cloud! That's right, I'm Cloud. Is it really you, Cloud? I never thought I'd find you here. Yeah, it's been a while. But she did know somebody named Cloud, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. Yeah. Happened to you? You don't look well. Yeah, it's nothing. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> How long has it been? Cloud definitely is not okay. Yeah, there's just like lightning sound effects. Like there's electricity in his brain, mm -hmm. and he kind of seizes every once in a while. Yeah, and then goes like Tifa. <laughs> <laughs> Five years. She's like, that doesn't seem right. Right. It seems like it was longer than that. Really, it's really been a long time. So Cloud is like, oh, last time I saw you was five years ago, right, Tifa? Remembering the Nibelheim incident. And Tifa's like, the last time I saw you was seven years ago. Yeah, like they already can't reminisce correctly. Actually, it's been seven years. Haley, what are you doing? You got your wish and joined soldier, quit after Sephiroth incident, and now you're a mercenary. Okay. You told me a lot about what happened after you left Nibelheim, but... Something's wrong. I felt that there was something strange about the things you talked about. All the things you didn't know that you should, and other things you shouldn't know that you did. <laughs> All of which sure. were like a part of my memory. But then I heard <clears throat> you were going far away. And I didn't want that. I didn't know what to do, so I thought I needed more time. And that's why I told you about the avalanche job. I wanted to be with you, watch you. Anyway, she wakes up from the flashback and she's in like a hospital room in Juna mm -hmm, with Barrett. You'll be better soon. You've been asleep for a long time. You'll be better soon. You'll be asleep for a long time. I'm hungry. Is Tifa waking up in a hospital? Hey. Hey, why? Well, she, I think on the airship escape, she got hurt and Barrett came up to her. That was kind of. Okay. Tifa's been in a coma for like a week. Yeah. She's waking up now, and Barrett's gonna fill her in on what's been going on. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I don't know what happened to Cloud either. Guess I shouldn't tell you not to worry. <laughs> None of them know if he's alright either. What about Sephiroth? You ain't over it yet. Remember that huge light in the northern cave? Since then, the crater's been surrounded by a huge barrier of light. And on top of that, some huge monster called Weapon's been on a rampage. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on still. Weapon? Remember that huge monster was with Sephiroth at the bottom of the crater? Uh-huh. Well, it's up here now. <laughs> they say it's some legendary monster from the past. Weapon is protecting Sephiroth? Dunno. But he's up here going around tearing shit up. <laughs> right now, Rufus is fighting it. I hate to say it, but he's got guts. We should have been the ones to destroy it, but we ain't got no time. Now we gotta team up with the Shinra. Hey, how about Meteor? Maybe that could save us. Oh, shit. So this room has had these, like, metal shutters over the windows the mm -hmm. whole time, and as soon as Tifa asks about Meteor, Barrett just, like, hits a button. He Whoa. pushed a button, and he's opening the, the blinds. Meteor is there. It's, like, bigger than the moon, and it's just <laughs> hanging in the sky. Like, it's it's gonna be any day now. Yeah. Whoa, oh, fuck. What the fuck? He's, he, he used Meteor. He, is that the meteor? It's, like, in the sky. It's, like, coming down? Yeah. It's gonna smash into the world, and we have to save it in time? <laughs> Fuck yeah. We're gonna have to go up into space. We're gonna shoot the rocket at the meteor. I hope so. Do we have to give up? <laughs> <laughs> Dunno. Dunno. <laughs> Will they give up? <laughs> anyway, Rufus walks in. Yeah. I thought Cloud would show up to save you all. 
Professor Hojo wanted to check up on Plaid, too. I bet if you're on the opposite side of these guys fighting them, they're like, we'll just get him here, and, and then, when the disaster's happening, Cloud's gonna show up yeah, and fuck up everything. <laughs> and then we can grab him like, or something. We'll use him on our side this time. Yeah, yeah. With his special talent. <laughs> Meteor has been summoned. Essentially, it's all but over now. Yeah, no kidding. So there's no need for you. No, maybe there is an important task for you. President, pre preparations for the public execution are complete. The public execution? Is Exe that what we're gonna do? Execution. What are you gonna get by executing us? Deterrence. So I guess this wasn't a hospital room so much as a prison that we were being kept in. Well, I think it was functioning as both. Yeah, okay. Tifa was unconscious. <laughs> and I get the feeling that the whole time they've been holding on to Barrett going like, we're not sure what we're gonna do with you. <laughs> well, I guess they've been preparing a public execution. You were to be executed for causing this situation. People are ignorant, they'll feel better as long as someone's punished. I take back what little praise I had for this goddamn jackass. <laughs> well, enjoy your last moments together. I'll, I'll tie your, your arms, arms now. now. So now we're gonna have to escape the uh, public execution? Yeah, I guess. Wouldn't it have been cool if like this game had opened on a public execution of somebody else, and we mm -hmm. were like, oh my god, now that's gonna happen to us? <laughs> this society hasn't said no to public executions. So now we're controlling Barrett, and like his arms are tied behind his back, and we're being sort of marched through now the upper levels of Junon we didn't get to go to. We're like up high in like the Shinra military base headquarters. Where they've got like an office building filled with like Windows 95 computers. Yeah, they have like old beige desktops. <laughs> Stop up here for a second. Uh huh. Are you allowed to be roaming around, or are you like. Tired? We're not really roaming around, like. Our hands are tied behind our back and there's one path we can walk on. Okay. There's like guards around. The guards are nice enough to let you stop off at the save point. Yeah, at least that was on the pathway that we had to walk. You would think they would just march behind us, but they're trusting us to just walk to our... They're like, meet us in the spot. Cannon. Do you think that banner is cannon? Is everyone here? These are the ones who brought this madness into the world. Oh, we're gonna have like some kind of kangaroo court. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we walk into a blue room with like a bunch of folding chairs set up. Yeah, it's like it's it looks like it's gonna function as like sort of a press room. Like there's room on stage for like sort of the politicians to announce yeah. what's about to happen. It's like but a con. For some reason, it's lit like a nightclub, though. You're right. Like there's <laughs> blue spotlights shining on the stage. The hell are these people? We will be broadcasting your miserable deaths live on national television. Your the deaths will be miserable. Mm-hmm. Scarlet, why a public execution in this day and age? With the chaos resulting from the media reports, we desperately need to, ra to rally public support. It's better that we punish somebody, anybody. You make me sick. Ha 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 ha. They'll never admit it, but everyone loves this stuff. Yeah, that's true. We'll start with this girl. If you've gotta do it, do me first. Look at the way he dances. Camera this way, make sure you get this. The audience just eats up tearful goodbyes. Are they gonna... Bullet to the head execution? Like, how, oh, it's oh, this. They got a special chair. <laughs> a crazy, it, it looks like it's gonna blow on them. Scarlet leads Tifa into like a very elaborate execution room. <laughs> yeah, the room has like pipes leading to a chair. This actually reminds me a bit of the chair that they put the monsters in in Monsters Inc. Yeah. Do you remember this? Yeah, it is Where like that. They put like a tube up to their mouths to like suck the screams mm -hmm. out. Yeah, it looks like that could happen. Like a tube could drop down. Death. By reverse vacuum. This is my special gas chamber. Oh, Take your time and enjoy a slow, painful death. Makes a lot more sense. Instead of making the room small, we just point the exhaust pipes at the chair. Mm -hmm. Stuck up fuck. Scarlet talking to- oh. Yeah. Was that televised? So Scarlet, like, insults and slaps Tifa and mm -hmm. walks out of the room. And then a guard leaving, I get- he just, like, I guess he had the key, like- in the hanging out of his, of his pants pocket? or something? Yeah. It like... falls onto the floor, <laughs> the key, right out of the guard's pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Was that on purpose? That better be a guard who's trying to help us. And then they close this gas chamber. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe the rest of our team is here. Right? Yeah, where have they been? They were, like, left on the cliff, yeah. standing there being like, oh, emergency, emergency. So the lights in the press conference room start flashing red and, mm -hmm. and blue. Yeah, before they can get this party started, Weapon comes and is is a much more pressing matter than executing Tifa on yeah. TV. Weapon's approaching. Attention all. <laughs> Military personnel, take your positions. Let's get oh, the no. Jaegers out of storage. 
Yeah, seriously. <laughs> To control the Rit Jaeger, hold L1 and R1 and press up and <laughs> In down. In order to drift with your pilot mate, be sure your engine temperatures don't get too hot. Vent them by <laughs> pressing X. Hey, hey, all of you. Damn, why now? Who the fuck is this guy? There is what looks like an extremely fat man in a brown suit. Yeah, like a hugely fat reporter wearing like a a, a trench coat. Like a big, a big like, <laughs> I'm hiding three people in here trench coat. How does it feel now, Scarlet? Hmm, so you didn't run. I'm impressed. How do I feel right now? Yeah. Huh? Sleeping gas. Oh. Oh, it's Kate Sith. <laughs> Yeah, the trench coat reporter spins around, revealing he's Kate Sith. Yeah, it's not three little kids. It's a cat and a moogle that's a robot. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sleeping gases scarlet, I guess. Yeah. I guess in my mind, because you can't see it, he probably has like an inhaler or a right. canister and he blows it in her face or right. something like well, that. Well, it's the same thing as in the beginning of the movie, Split. For those of you who have seen that. <laughs> Weirdo. So wait, there was a poison gas that was about to be used to kill Tifa. And I then there's a sleeping gas that we were just using on the... I think he might have just had it with him and he, like, sleeping gassed her. It's just amazing that two different types of gas appear in the game. So much gas. So close to each other. But yeah, they should have just made it a syringe that he, like... Stabs her, yeah. I'm here to help. Why you? Ain't you part of Shinra? Let's what? just say I'm against capital punishment. Besides, I hate this broad. Come on, we gotta help Tifa. Is this guy still back at the headquarters? Yeah, I think he's just doing his daily office job. In but it's just gotten it's just Shimmer become building? the best job job ever. Suddenly, he's like, <laughs> I'm <laughs> saving the world. Shit. His yeah. supervisor is like walking oh, by like, his he's office, like, he's going like, like oh, "What are you doing?" Fuck. He's like, "Oh, and I can <laughs> kill my bosses." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like probably they've forgotten he's there. They're like, right. oh, he's one of those operators. But he's like clocking in, and the system is still paying him his paycheck every week. Yeah. Fools. I've already pushed the switch. Yeah. Well, then we better hurry up. Open the door. Let all the gas out. It won't open. Barrett can't open the locked door to the gas chamber. Yeah, and we cut over to Heidegger, who's, like, running into the Windows 95 operating room, yep. which I, I guess is probably where you, like, control the cannon from or something. Probably. Heidegger's all over here with the 90s computers. <laughs> this is cool. It's weapon. Yeah, this is one of the cooler images in the game. Yeah, like Heidegger and Rufus are standing in front of like an enormous window with like red curtains pulled aside, looking out over the cannon and the ocean. Yeah, it's the kind of window that only exists at the top of skyscrapers, it's floor to ceiling, and it's giving Rufus and Heidegger the perfect view of this weapon fight. There's been so many attacks lately, can we handle it? <laughs> I believe so, your orders? No well, need to ask. Why don't you use that? Like, when they were talking about a weapon that was built by the planet, I was like, what about that big weapon that was, like, embedded in the planet? I think that's where we are. The big, I yeah. I think we're at that military oh. base. Yeah, we'll give it a shot from our big cannon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, so it's I was like, use awesome. the big weapon on yeah, the weapon. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, okay. Open the cannon doors. I God, can that's cannon. like, it wasn't just a cool location. Like, that gun is going to, like, shoot I was shoot like, that has to fire at something. Let's check off. The Tell amount of payoff to their planting is like, I don't know how you would... Open cannon doors, activate cannon, target, weapon. Yeah, where do you start when writing a story like this? Whoa. I mean, you start by writing a detective story in New York. Those are... And then you keep handing it around <laughs> in the office, I guess. <laughs> So you guys remember back in episode 10 when we explored Junon City mm -hmm. and we were going into like all those basements and running down that like field where you do the parade. Mm -hmm. So apparently it's all been industrialized to the point where the building facades have like lock doors come down over them mm -hmm. and the place where we had the, the road the, the, you were walking the road on. we were walking on like removes itself and shrinks back revealing other parts yeah, of the there's gun. like more guns that come up out of the street <laughs> right. like it was, if we, we were running down it I think going like this road is so long <laughs> right and the reason is I guess to make this cut scene make more sense like, right it's so big there's so many guns that reveal themselves. <laughs> oh man, those hydraulics, though. I mean, the kickback on this gun is gonna be intense. It's like gonna change the rotation of the planet. Preparations complete. The cannon. Fire! Fuck yeah. Shoot it at the kaiju. So the cannon fires one giant bullet, and it soars across over the ocean. Mm hmm. That nuclear thing, it probably just made it mad. Yeah. 
or like even bigger or something. God, how loud must that gun be? Oh my god, you would hear it on the other side of the world. Yeah, yeah, like the windows would rattle, and they'd be like, "What was that?" Like, yeah, the shock wave would be, and the tsunami that it would create when it landed <laughs> in the water. Did, did we, we hit him? Did we hit him? Seems so. Does it? Weapon approaching. <laughs> it's it's on toward, towards us. So the first shot missed. I guess so. I mean, they fired it just into the ocean, right? Like the, the the weapon is swimming, and they just <laughs> shot it at the water. It can't be. We hit it dead on. How about the cannon? It takes time to reload. Yeah, I bet. And use regular firepower in the meantime. Yes, sir. Open all artillery doors. Target weapon. Don't let it Whoa. land. Yeah, here we go. Oh, man. Yeah. Every shot in this game, I feel like, is about showing you scale. Yeah. There, oh, yeah, it's so much about scale. So then we get a cutscene which shows us weapons swimming in the ocean, and it's just like a massive sea monster mm -hmm. with like a huge tail propelling it and huge spikes sticking up out of its Going back. at least 50 knots. It's got like 10 dorsal fins, and, <laughs> and like all of Junon is just like firing rounds out across like a wall of bullets. Yeah, this is from normal size howitzers, not like the giant one, because yeah. they're reloading that in the meantime. <laughs> Speed 70 knots, weapon closing in, not good. Yeah, shoot some bazookas at it. Dude, this is awesome. This is so cool. Do you think he'll roar like Godzilla? Yeah. So Weapon, swimming at Junon, slams into the city at full speed. Mm -hmm. But the city seems like basically fine. Yeah, it's like built for this. Well, Weapon found that funny. We cut back to Tifa, who's still strapped in the execution chair. Oh no, the gas is gas. starting. Gas! And also this key is right in front of me. Bear, Bear, help! Hold your breath. Hold on as long as you can. Come on, I can't hold it forever. She. We cut back to Barrett, who doesn't know how to get into the room. Mm-hmm. There's gotta be, like, a another way in. Or can you unpush the switch? Yeah, let's talk to Kate Sith. We gotta go with a different plan. Let's get out of this room first. Tifa, I'll help you, I promise. <laughs> Just keep holding your breath. You know how people say, don't hold your breath? Well, do. Okay, okay, time for plan B. Let's run to the airport. What? <laughs> Why the airport and leave Tifa here? She's still Trust me, trust breath. me, we gotta take a chance. I can't trust you. Tifa is like actively gulping in poison right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, but Barrett and Kate Sith have no way to get into the room, and Kate is kind of like on the ball going like, Barrett, we gotta get over here. I have a plan that we're in the middle of. Like, we gotta go. <laughs> so they do. <laughs> Is this the way to the airport? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't know. You'd think there'd be better signage. Soldier second class. I knew it. Yeah, that's why he's yeah. got a big sword. We cut to like the street level right below the gigantic gun. Ruffy's here dressed as a reporter with a cameraman pointed at her. Yeah, and the cameraman is not associated with us <laughs> right. somehow. Where are you? Are you running? Oh, wait, I'm back here. Okay. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> That was one of those cases where you're like, where am I? And yeah. you're a tiny pixel <laughs> well, in the distance. Well, yeah, this shot, like, you can see all the way down the long road of Junon. Right. And Yuffie is near, like, the front of the camera. <laughs> and, like, Barrett <laughs> is all the way at the end of the road. There's, it's you so You don't hard think to that see. it's a thing it, that... It, like, looks it's so an great. Ant. And you're, plays, like, moving an ant it around. It plays so bad. <laughs> But we get into a fight, and it's the first time we've seen Kate Sith and, like, his fight look. Mm -hmm. We're pretty impressed. Look how muscular this fat noodle is. It's really got some definition on those thighs. Yeah, totally. That's like some serious quads. Oh my god, yeah. I didn't... From the beginning of this disc, I'm, like, so enthralled. Continue. I'm always... Yeah, it's just this like... This is awesome. <laughs> this is like... The game, like... <laughs> We finished the first loop, and now it's like, now it's, we're yeah. here, we're playing the game. So Barrett makes it to the front of the road, and he realizes the reporter is Yuffie. The hell you doing here? And who's that cameraman? Seriously, who is the fucking cameraman that Yuffie's got to go with this, with this disguise? Did he come in the bag? Uh, she must have tricked a cameraman from a real news crew or something. <laughs> right? Because, like, he's not with us on the ship afterwards. No. Whoa. So Weapon is right on Junon's doorstep. Mm-hmm. He stands up 
Right, in the ocean. Right, like right outside the beach. Like, he, you know, he's only like 10 feet deep, so he can really get some height. Yeah, and this weapon is like a purple and blue man Cthulhu fish. thing. Yeah. I think it's got a Cthulhu face. It does, have, it does kind of have that going on. He's got a big spike. He looks like a monster from Power Rangers that they would fight. <laughs> at, you know what I mean? That's pretty awesome. I forgot this game has kaiju in it. I'll explain later. We've got to get to the airport. I hope that this is leading up to our air boat at the airport. I bet you're right, right? Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. We've seen it before, but here it is again. Mm -hmm. The high wind is like tethered to the giant helipad mm -hmm. at Junon Harbor. The high wind is the name of the airship. Yeah, the, 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 the Shinra airship that Rufus flies around on. Right now, Tifa's holding her breath. Yep. Yeah, look at that. Barrett, Yuffie, and Kate Sith are like directly under the airship. And the shot of it looming over them in the background is just like a gorgeous... Look at this fucking airship. There's like airship. an amazing sunset behind yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you sure this is the right way? Are we sure we're at the airport? It's a dead end. It's a dead end with an airship attached to it. Yeah, Barrett's not really getting it. <laughs> uh oh, did I make a wrong turn? Is Are you not looking up? <laughs> You damn cat. <laughs> what the hell are we going to do now? They'll all be coming soon. Uh, it's obvious what we're going to do. Yo, better watch my back till the end, partner. He said partner. We cut back to Tifa, and the only way I can explain <laughs> this sequence is that, like, time is a little out of order. Like, this uh -huh. must be the moment Barrett ran off. Right. Otherwise, she's been getting gassed for, like, five minutes. <laughs> Move your feet and arms, then use your head to get out of the chair. So she would die here, but you're gonna, like, try to slip out of your restraints and get this key? Yeah. Yeah, press the triangle button to move your head. Press the square button to use your left hand. Press the circle button to use your right hand. And press the X button to use your feet. It's the opposite on the left and right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's unclear. And, like, you kind of, like, the more you press a button, Tifa will kind of slowly go through the motions of unlocking herself. Yeah. <laughs> Try different patterns. Try and combine the two. Like legs and right arm. Can you not move them both at once? I mean, it's like. I don't think hitting them both at once like? does it. Can you lose this? I don't think so. Tifa's like trying to get the key between her two feet and it keeps like slipping out like it's a claw game. Right. There's something like quappy about this. <laughs> like, you know, the tr you know that game where you're trying to run? So you're trying, it's like, oh, I need to get the key to my right hand, but like right. the right hand isn't cooperating. Like Octodad or whatever. Yeah, that kind of like <laughs> control thing. Like try moving your left arm and then your legs. Oh, there you go. Now you move your head and your left arm at the same time. Another thing that only works like this here. Now you can use your. Yeah, there you go. You were trying to keep doing it with your teeth, and you're like, I have an arm for it. Button stops the gas. Tifa runs and hits the emergency shutoff. Mm -hmm. They have a button inside the gas chamber for that. I guess you would, if like emergency shutdown. Yeah. yeah, in case you know, somebody somebody who cleaning works there. it gets stuck. Yeah. In, yeah. Because I hypothetically, in this one at she least, they should up. be secured. You know, so. Yeah. If they, if they escape, it's operator error. Tifa runs up to the gas chamber door and can't open it. We'll open it. I mean, Barrett couldn't open it. No. Maybe Weapon will. Yeah, maybe he'll fuck up the building enough for us to get out. Wow. Weapon opens up its mouth and shoots a beam of light at Junon and, like, cuts a hole in the city. I can't believe this is called Weapon and not Leviathan. I something. know, they could have called it something other than Weapon. Whoa! Yeah, shoot him in the face. As Weapon was gearing up another beam to, like, really destroy the city, the howitzer is fully loaded and they fire it, slamming the bullet directly into his face point blank. Whoa, it worked? Wow. A direct face hit blew his head off. Is it dead? Or did he just run away? We cut back to Tifa, who's in the gas chamber room looking up at, like, the slice in the ceiling that the weapon had made, mm -hmm. just like, well, thank you very much for that. Yeah. First you locked me in this weird place, and now you're telling me to come out? Make up your mind. Sheesh. Yeah, so she starts climbing up out of the room onto the outside of the structure. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, it 
tore a hole in the... Uh, whoa. <laughs> so Tifa climbs up out of the hole that Weapon made for her and starts climbing down the outside of Junon itself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's people up there. Yeah, good luck catching me, bitch. <laughs> oh my <What>? god. <laughs> So as we start, like, climbing down the building, Scarlet and some guards are already, like, at the hole where we were. And, mm-hmm. like, we see guards that are trying to get us, like, falling off of the building to their death. Yeah, while well, Chief is, like, us. climbing down the windows. <laughs> Push the guard over? I think, sh- I don't know, we should have stayed. I bet she was going to be like, get down there and catch her. And he'd be like, I don't know, it's kind of high. Hey. Hey. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Haley. No. Haley. This is so cool. Yeah, this is fucking awesome. Tifa's found herself, like, out on the massive barrel of the giant Junon gun. Mm -hmm. She's just running across, like, the top of the city. Yeah, you're, like, starting to make your way towards the end of the barrel, like, hanging over the ocean. I ran onto a gun. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Right out onto the barrel. How do you even manufacture a metal piece that big? Oh, man, I was, uh, watching videos of manufacturing enormous pieces of metal. It is... Insane. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course it is. So Tifa makes it to like the end of the barrel. It's mm-hmm. like a dead end and Scarlet catches up to her. And this is probably one of my favorite scenes in the whole game. <laughs> the execution may have been unsuccessful, but your death by falling from here and crashing into the water below still might be pretty exciting. Just give it up. Tifa, you got oh, you want to... You want to slap? Stuck up to the end. Quit slapping me, you wench. Yeah, Scarlet walks up to Tifa and slaps her in the face. Yeah, and Tifa says, quit slapping me, you old <laughs> wench. And then it says, push the O button. <laughs> slap fight? <laughs> it's a slap fight. Yes. Yeah, don't let her fucking slap. You just keep slapping her right in the face. <laughs> God. There you go. This fight mechanic works like the Rock'em Sock'em robots at the Gold Saucer. It's yeah. like you don't know if you're doing it right or not. It's even There's even less to it. It's more <laughs> right. like if you don't get that first slap off fast enough, there's like a reset to the slap. You know, So after you press O, your arm's got to go down and you got to take a breath and then you can slap again. So yeah. if your timing's off, she's just slapping you and you can't, you can't get your hand up. I mean, Tifa... God, I can't stand it. Fucks people up. I know. Take her away. Run. Who's saying that? Maybe Cloud? Run, run to, to the, the end, end of the, the canyon. canyon. Cannon. Tifa turns and runs to the end of the cannon on faith. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Barrett's there on the high wind. It turns out it wasn't a dead end. Yeah, the high wind like rises up right in front of her and they drop a rope. And she jumps off. I'll throw you a rope. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. We've got an airship. It's finally happened. Yeah, and the whole team, like, sails away, leaving Scarlet and all of Shinra there to clean up the mess. Of course you'd be like, this is probably the best game ever made. I know. My cheeks hurt a bit from the slapping. So we're on the deck of the high wind, and it's Barrett, Kate, Sith, and Tifa, and I think Yuffie is passed out over on the side of the thing. Yeah, well, Yuffie uh, is has motion sickness, uh, right. so she does not like <laughs> flying or being in cars or anything like that. Forget about that. What's all this about? What is this massive thing that I'm on? And then Kate Sith makes it official. Mm-hmm. In any case, the airship, Highwind, is now yours. Yay! <laughs> what? You have the power to do that? He's my favorite kind of employee. He's like, yeah, I work here, but I'm still a person. Oh my god. Oh, dude. Oh, we get to walk around in it? (laughs) Of course we do. Yeah. We've got like an industrial airship. I love the airship in this game. I know. It's like you have your own building, like your own (laughs) Shinra building. Like we're running around in it. Cockpit. Operation. There's so many different rooms. Yeah, yeah they got there's ops. A fucking chocobo stable in here. <laughs> there's a chocobo stable <laughs> on our airship. It's got a bunch of different rooms. Sorry, go speak to Captain Sid. Fuck yeah. Oh man, we got a battle room. Yes, a some war room. We're gonna, gonna be like moving yeah. around. We're gonna play Risk in here. It's gonna be great. My hands are full, so I'll excuse myself here. Chew the fat. 
Oh yeah, and there's like engineers around yeah, and you I can lo- chew the fat with I them. I love that. We have like a whole crew, you know? It's not it's not like sets where he's like this is my airship, I fly it myself. It's right. like this is a big operation that requires yeah, I guess like back a dozen people. In the fourth one, Sid had like two crew members That's that true. he was constantly using and abusing. Mm-hmm. Did all these people they were like, "Well, I work on the airship. I guess if you own it now, I work for you." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what should I talk about? Want to hear uh, okay. we rebelled? Yes, they do. Working on the high one, we spent every day slaving under Heidegger. Mm. Whenever he got yelled at by the president, he'd immediately take it out on the crew. Mm. We put up with this all the time, even when he beat us. I mean, I finally made it on the crew of the famous high one, and there's no way I was going to quit over him. Mm. Let's see, I must have been a week ago. It was my shift, and we were headed north, <laughs> headed towards, heading towards the North Cape. Wait, this is a guy who like wound up on the Enterprise and has like that kind of shit, but it's like an asshole is now captain of it. And yeah. He's like, well, I'm on the fucking Enterprise. That's what I've been going for like, ugh. everyone, including the President Scarlet, got on, and with them, I saw Sid, a legendary pilot. Ooh. And he was looking around inside of the ship, looking really, you know, nostalgic. <laughs> he even talked to us. I couldn't believe it. I was so impressed. He was every bit as war- warm-hearted as we'd always heard. <laughs> Sid said dick. that if he had the high wind, things would be a lot easier. And now here we are off to save the planet. It's true. He really overwhelmed me. And that's why we decided to help. After the North Cave, we fight. We went to Junon, and I started screaming, Fire! Fire! <laughs> In the middle of all the commotion, we stole this ship from the Shinra. That's how it happened. Just a minor mutiny against our leaders. <laughs> but Barrett and you were captured by Heidegger. We waited seven days for a chance to rescue you guys before really? we finally could. So thanks to our successful mission, we were able to see you again. I hope I didn't bore you with too much with that long story. I love that. It's like, we have an answer for why... Yeah, this game's got an answer for everything. But maybe we should mention, like, it's a good thing that Tifa woke up when she did. Yeah, seriously. every Everything was sort of contingent on the seven days. Like, there's right. a lot. The public execution. Like, if she was still in a coma right now and all this was going down, that would suck. I don't think she would have made it out of the execution. <laughs> chocobos that way? We have a chocobo thing here? I bet we can breed chocobos now. I bet, I bet what it is is you catch them and you bring them onto the airship. Right. And you can keep them in here. Yeah, in this horrifying cell. <laughs> Talk to that guy. I'm bored. I'd like to ride a chocobo. So we talk to the stable boy, <laughs> and he explains how this chocobo room will work. Listen, yeah. you gotta ride in on a chocobo you've raised yourself. Okay, and Then okay. if you bring your chocobo to this stable, I'll take care of it this for you. This stable? I'll take care of it for you. What? How do you raise a chocobo? Can't say no much about that. If you want to go know about raising a chocobo, there's a chocobo ranch near Midgar. You should ask them. Yeah, okay, all right. There's a million new things for you to do. Come on, everyone's waiting. Everyone? Everyone's here? Not cloud. We will come to the airship, the highland. <laughs> What's wrong? You should be more excited than that. It's a pretty awesome fucking ship. See it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The meteor's coming, and weapon is on the rampage. At a time like this, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. No idea at all. If only I had some kind of direction. Get a hold of yourself, Tifa. Come on, let's think about this. No way we can get off of this train we're on. If only Cloud was here, everything would be fine. Cloud would... Stand that cocky little way he did and tell us what to do. <laughs> and say, everything's under control, Tifa. And Tifa, the reason we all thought it was Cloud was because... I know. That's why I want to make sure that's why I have to see him again. What? I think because of your memory or some shit. Mm. Like, I don't know how they know. Like, you that. told us he was Cloud. Right. So I'm glad so you're... glad you're all right, right, Tifa. Gotta admit, he was a strange dude. You know, just when I thought he was cool, you know. He'd go over and do some damn fool thing. And when you thought he was smart, you know, he'd show you how stupid he was. <laughs> Knowing what I do now, I can see why he was that way. He was like a half person or something. He was just a shapeshifter <laughs> pretending to be Cloud. And for some reason, none of us are really pissed off at you for bringing him into this. F- like. <laughs> Cloud is still stuck deep in the North Crater, where the ground cracked and swallowed him up. Probably. In the depths of the underground. That's a hopeful and comforting idea. <laughs> Deep within the earth. Are you talking about the live stream? 
It's a live stream sometimes gushes out on the surface from cracks in the ocean floor. Oh yeah. I heard that such a place exists. It's called the metal. Yeah, he'd be fine if he just popped out of a crack in the bottom of the ocean floor <laughs> and floated quickly to the surface. We would find him immediately. <laughs> he'd be totally fine. Maybe, just maybe, clouds. Stuck in a magma pocket or something. Pilot in training, oh, level Captain three. Said. Diva, or, uh... Diva, sorry, <laughs> but I've got to show this moron how to land the ship. Oh, and Tifa, no matter what your goal is, you've got to be prepared. Go to your room and get ready for our operation. You're going to be our new main guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is, for now, Tifa is our guy. She has her own room in here? Maybe there's another way in from the top deck? Oh, uh, maybe. And in order to get like, from one to like the other, you have to go there, outside. Oh yeah, I love this. Every season we get lost on the airship, but this season we get lost on the airship. Yeah, we're like inside of it going like, seems like it's bigger than this. And Where do I go? Said, go, to to our, <laughs> go to our room. How do we pilot it? <laughs> I'm giving the Cosmo memory to Red. Wait, he says I don't get it. Maybe I can't give it to him until the end. We'll learn more about these level four limit breaks later. Yeah, well, you have to get all of the other limit breaks unlocked before they can use the item to unlock the other one. Right. We still only have the level. We still one only have level breaks. one yeah. limit breaks. They said go to your room. I think they meant this room. This has got to be what they meant. Like get your team together. Yeah, let's say go to the fucking operations room. Let's see if we can go fly a ship now. That we have a team. Because I don't think there's anywhere else to go. Like, yeah, I don't think so either. We should start thinking about food. Yeah, I agree. I'm hungry. It's already three. I was thinking about maybe forming some burger patties. That would be great. I'd love to eat that. Are we going? We're going. Yeah, we're off. Oh, he's level four now. He was level three. Yeah, so how land. land. So we finally talked to the pilot of the ship, and we're back above the world map. We're, we're in control. Flying. In three dimensions, you can fly up and down, too, like, <laughs> and you can s speed up and stuff. <laughs> oh, baby. Fuck yeah. Oh, oh, shit. What is that in the sky? That's the meteor. That is the... Okay. Then you go down it up and forward. Woo-hoo! Oh, yeah. Wee! And that's episode 25. Yeah, disc two is off and running now yep. that we have the high wind. We can go anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's still some places that you're going to need other modes of transportation to get to. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Not to spoil anything coming up, but there's even more vehicles. Like, disc two, I love. Yeah. This is going to be a whirlwind of story. Yeah, and there's going to be much less of, like, hemming and hawing over Sephiroth clones and right. Ho Hojo's <laughs> notes and, like, all of this confusing stuff. But we've been let loose. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning of next episode, I think we go see what happens. We go around the world to find what to do next. Exactly. Which is, man... We're finally going around the world to find what to do next. We have an With airship. With an airship. Yeah. Like, How many episodes has it been? Next one is going to be 26, which is the total amount of episodes from season three. Yeah, so I mean, I mean what the fuck? This, this game is paced so much I giantly. I mean, you know... It, so much giantly. With, like, the, the remake coming up and everything, now that I'm, like, going over it, the multiple games thing, I could see how they could go, like, oh, all one... Nah, let's just, like, take a chunk. Right. Fuck. But... <laughs> So you're going to play the Midgar game and never get an airship and never do so many key ingredients in well, the Final we just, Fantasy game? we don't game? know. I, yeah. We just don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But, but anyway, we have the airship. We've it, got... <laughs> it keeps arriving at new levels of Final Fantasy game. Right, like, yeah. in slow steps. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, what was the deal with that gas room and Tifa's escape? <laughs> That whole sequence is one of my favorite in the game. Like, the way that that propels itself forward, there's, yeah. like... And I mean, like, not all of the time matches up evenly, but, like, they're tracking so much. Like, they're tracking Heidegger and Rufus fighting weapon with a giant gun. Mm -hmm. They're tracking Barrett and Kate Sith escaping to the airport, and they're tracking Tifa escaping and fighting Scarlet, like, all simultaneously. And it all comes together in an awesome way with a slap fight, and mm -hmm. jumping off of a gun to land on a helicopter and it's fucking like, sweet amazing cutscene yeah and the feeling of like it's all doomed because Tifa's gonna die leading into like the rising motion of like mm -hmm. you have an airship in the boom, theme boom, kicks boom, in. Boom, yeah, boom. exactly Ugh, exhilarating 
Are you exhilarated, I'm audience? Fully ex I'm fully exhilarated. <laughs> they better be. Oh, do you want to enter the life stream? Let's grab the flavor crystals of reality and taste a different sensation across all of our senses. I'm ready for that. Let's do it. And here we are in the land of the flavor crystal. It's like the crystals of spiritualism. But well, you like, can taste everything here. Yeah. Colors, sounds, mm -hmm. smells. And I even taste a message. Skin, a message. Eyeballs. Is, eyeballs. <laughs> very tasty, <laughs> I guess. Taste kind of like grapes. Yeah, similar mouthfeel uh, yeah. <laughs> to a grape. <laughs> and, and here's the taste of the message. Mm -hmm. Oh, the message reads... Quote, as someone who has made it their own personal gaming goal to play all the single player games in the main Final Fantasy series, I have found binging this podcast over the past few months both cathartic and nostalgic. I thank you both for making it. I'm really looking forward to when you play my favorite game in the series, FF10. With the remainder of my message, I would like to propose two suggestions for you to consider. One, for Genova's sake, change the awful sound that leads into this segment. I find it impossible to align my chakras when my ears are bleeding. Two, after you finish putting out all of the FF7 episodes, can you please release a commentary track for the Advent Children movie? End quote. Oh, that's that's a that's a great. That message. is a great message. <laughs> um, um, you know, as for the sound, I think that's just the sound that's made when you detach your consciousness from your body. Yeah, that's the set the that happens. Street. It's not up to us at all. We have no control no, over that. We have none. And also, you know, it's really, it's the reset sound that causes your brain to leave behind the old world. Mm -hmm. It's the ripping that occurs that then lets you align your chakras. The glorious ripping. In the new <laughs> space. When it comes to the FF7 advent children movie we are planning on doing a commentary for that and we can say that's going to be a patreon special yeah we're going to do something for that for just a dollar you'll mm -hmm. be able to access that and we we have ideas for other stuff bonus stuff for ff7 as we get towards the end of the season mm -hmm. so yes we will be doing advent children uh it will be a patreon thing mm -hmm. and and yeah Thanks so much to Chad Mietunen, who I, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I asked him for a pronunciation guide, and he said he didn't care if I got it wrong, but Mietunen is the best I've got. Okay. Chad Mietunen, thank you very much for that message. And uh, should we get out of here? Yeah, let's go. And we're back. If you're interested in the live stream message, they're just $25 a piece. Just send an email to nocappodcast at gmail.com with the subject line live stream, and we'll make it happen. We do payments through PayPal because we're totally independent. And uh, yeah, make us say something that you want us to say. Bring back Werner Herzog. Have him do a message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can really get creative with it. And with that, let's end the show. Uh, Rate and review us on iTunes. And Apple Podcasts. I think at this point when this airs, iTunes is going to be long gone iTunes isn't going to exist anymore at that point. Yeah, we'll see. Do what it an happens. Apple podcast on your Mac. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or uh, anywhere else that you listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. Or you know. get in touch with us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Oh, We're, yeah, the Instagram account has been up and running for a while now. For many, many months, you know, I just like the point where we're recording this, we just did it. Yeah, but, uh, you know, come over to Instagram and get your, like, Haley fix. Yeah, we got Try a lot of pictures of the dog. Content, surprise content, mm -hmm. extra free bonus content if you follow us on Instagram, really, yeah. because, I mean... There's all kinds of sandwich hacks. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, even? Sloppy Joe hot dog <laughs> buns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of fun happening over there. And then yeah. uh, on top of that, the Patreon. come to our Patreon page. And thank you, a huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much to everybody who supports us. It mm -hmm. really, really means a lot to us. And if you're interested in supporting us, you don't just do it for fun. You can get the episodes early. Yeah, you can and get we the have video version. Some bonus content out there now too that and we'll yeah, unlock. There's and some bonus episodes. You know, you know what's still up on the Patreon is that documentary about mm -hmm. me doing stand up at age 16. That's we talked that's about from still last up season. There, yeah. You can go get that. You can go get that. And the ep bonus episode that we made surrounding that. Mm -hmm. And uh, more bonus episodes to come. Mm -hmm. We are hard at work on all of it. So go check it out at patreoncom nocat 
and get in touch with us. You know the deal. We said it already. There's social media exists, and you probably use it. You probably you are do. listening to a podcast. Yeah, you found out about it somehow. I just imagine, like, some dude out in the woods, like, getting CD-ROMs mailed to him with, like, our podcast <laughs> on them. I would love that. <laughs> if that's you, get on the internet and let us know, because I want to know about that. <laughs> and with that, here's a little no-one-can-know-about-this dessert. Mm-hmm. This week... Gourmet Kit Kats? Gorm- what makes them gourmet? <laughs> I don't know. On that Bon Appetit YouTube, whatever, there's a woman who like uh, makes gourmet junk food. Okay, so like a It a means homemade, that you made it yourself. You made it yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, homemade Kit Kats. Homemade Kit Kats. Homemade. Enjoy. What? Brother's just texting me randomly. When are you going to do the Red Dead 2? No one can know about this podcast. When will you do the No One Can Know About This Patreon-only Chronocast and the oh. Patreon-only Pokemon cast and the Patreon-only other JRPG? Uh, yeah, real soon. Um, oh, you should re-equip Yeffie. Yeah, good call. She's got a really awesome weapon.